Hi, I'm Konstantin Baum, Master of Wine, and I normally taste some of the greatest wines in the world on this channel, but today I'm going to do another discounter tasting. Why? Well, I know that a large share of wine is sold in discounters, and I want to keep an open mind. On top of that, you asked me to review the wines from Lidl, so I'm going to blind taste my way through their selection to find out whether their wines are actually big on quality, Lidl on price. Let's go. First of all, I haven't been paid by Lidl to review their wines. I do not buy wine at Lidl normally and these wines were purchased by my wife with my own money to make sure that I can give you my honest opinion and that I don't know what's inside those bags. Secondly, some viewers were offended by the comments that I made on the wines from Aldi. In any tasting, I keep an open mind and let the wine speak to me, but please don't expect me to say that discount wines are the greatest thing since sliced bread. Very low retail prices generally mean that the winemaker doesn't have the resources to make a really good wine and make a living, but my opinion on what is a good wine might be different from yours. This tasting is going to be blind to make sure that I know as little as possible about the wines. What I know though is that all wines are from Lidl. Lidl is another retail company from Germany just like Aldi. They operate 11,550 stores in 31 different countries and they sell billions worth of produce every year. They developed from another company called Lidl NC Südfrüchtenhandlung that was slowly converted into a discount supermarket in 1973. Since the 1990s, Lidl has expanded internationally and they are now in many different markets, mainly in Europe, but also in the US. They are now focusing more and more on quality so that they are not perceived only as cheap. In terms of their offering, Aldi and Lidl are fairly similar, but Lidl has more branded products while Aldi is focusing more on their own brands. Lidl is also one of the biggest wine retailers in Germany and wine continues to be an important category for them to drive foot traffic. Prices are very low in the discount sector in Germany and most wine is sold under three euros per bottle and roughly only a fifth of the price actually goes to the producers. In a recent documentary by German TV station ZDF, Aldi and Lidl wine suppliers were complaining anonymously about the inability to negotiate prices and the high demands by the discount chains, but some wineries want to work with discounters because they are able to buy large volumes of wine and that really helps if you have hundreds of thousands of bottles to sell. Lidl has invested heavily into their wine selection and they use special wine offers regularly as a marketing tool. They also work with a master of wine, Richard Bamfield, who is their independent lead taster and he is, in my opinion, a great guy that I respect. I believe that he does not select wines for them but rates their offering, writes tasting notes and is the face they use when talking about wine. So now it's time to taste the wines. I do not know what the wines are, but the prices will pop up while I talk about the wines. I will also put a list of the wines, including the prices below this video. I'm going to rate the wines according to the 100 point system, and I will put the explanation on that system below this video as well. So let's go. Wine one smells quite intense and very fruit driven. It smells of ripe apple, pineapple, actually, it smells quite a bit of the way those little gummy bears taste, the pineapple gummy bears taste, if you know what I mean. It suggests for me that this was fermented at a very low temperature in order to get this very expressive fruity flavor that for me would get boring quite quickly. On the palate it's juicy and vibrant, but there's not a lot going on there. This is a bit of a boring wine, but it's okay. So I would rate this 73 points and yeah i would call this maybe a pinot grigio or grauburgunder for me this tastes a little bit like yeah pinot grigio from northern italy not a wine to rave about something entry level around the three to four euro mark and it's okay so let's see whether i'm right okay Oh, so it's actually not Pinot Grigio, but it's kind of a good friend of Pinot Grigio. It's Lugana. The grape variety is Trebbiano di Suave in this case. And it's a wine that is super popular in Germany because it just doesn't hurt you. But in general, the wines tend to be a little bit boring. And this, in my opinion, is a bit of a boring example. It actually retails for five euros. So it's a bit more expensive than what I would have thought. 
Lugana tends to be a little bit more expensive than generic Pinot Grigio. So let's move on to wine number two. Okay, I'm smiling because this wine is quite easy to identify. It is very explosive, very aromatic. There's quite a lot of passion fruit there. There's also gooseberry flavors coming through, a little bit of grass. So quite complex, more fruit driven, some herbaceous and spicy notes. And for me, this points pretty much directly to New Zealand. On the palate, it's juicy and fresh. There's good acidity there. And this is also very consistent with New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. I think this is Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand. I actually had a Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand in my Aldi tasting as well that I liked very much. This, in my opinion, is not as good. I think this is a little yeah, less exciting. I would rate this 77 points, but it's pretty good. I think maybe it retails for seven euros. So shall we have a look? I hope that I'm right because otherwise this will get a little bit embarrassing and maybe more entertaining for you, but let's have a look. Okay, Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand. I was right. Thank you. Wine number three is also a white wine that's clear to see. And there's also a little bit of CO2 in the glass. This is not a sparkling wine, but the CO2 gives the wine a little bit more freshness, a bit more vibrancy. This doesn't tell me much about the grape variety, but usually these wines with CO2 are a bit younger. The wine smells of white peach, green apple. The flavors are less pronounced than for the Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand, but it's still quite intense. On the palate, the wine is really juicy and fresh. There's quite a lot of acidity there, but there's also some sugar giving the wine a little bit more roundness. And it's actually pretty good. I think this is also a fairly typical example of its type. For me, this screams Riesling. And I would actually think that this might be from the Naha or Mosel. I would rate this 85 points. It is a pretty good wine. I'd say this is probably a bit more expensive than the previous wines. So let's have a look. And it is, oh yeah. It is a Riesling. It's from the Mosel, I guess. Yeah, it's from the Mosel. It's from a pretty famous winery too, Van Volksen. I didn't know that they worked with Lidl, but this is actually a pretty good wine. Well done. Before I taste wine number four, I have to rinse my mouth with a little bit of water because this was quite sweet. And a sweet wine in a blind tasting can really throw you off if you taste dry wines afterwards. So I'm just going to wash my teeth. While the first three wines were pretty good examples of that type, even though I didn't get them all, this is really tricky because it smells really weird. I think it smells pretty flawed, not really clean, a bit oxidized. There's quite a lot of exotic flavor as well. It's just a really weird mix. On the palate, it's kind of harsh, slightly bitter. Well, no, this is just not good. Not good at all. I don't know what happened here, but it's not a good wine. Definitely not. And I find it quite hard to tell you anything about the wine because I don't really get any grape variety typicity here in the glass. It tastes a little bit exotic, but also like there was a little bit of careless winemaking involved. On the palate, there's actually quite a bit of concentration. So maybe it's from a warmer climate. It's certainly not a good wine. Certainly not something that I would recommend. I would rate this like in the high 60s, maybe slightly flawed, even though I can't really pinpoint any major errors there, ma major flaws, but it doesn't really taste and feel the way a wine should taste and feel. So let's have a look. I'm really curious to find out what this is. This is an organic wine and it's also vegan. Well done, La Mancha. And it's Ayren Macabeo Dry. And it cost two euros 79. So yeah, this is, save your money, don't buy this. It's kind of disgusting. That's it. Next we have wine number five and I kind of can't wait to pour it because I want to get that 
weird flavor out of my mouth. So let's go. It's a red wine. So this is better than the previous wine, but it's also not going to be my favorite, I think. This smells of blackberries, pepper, and also some other spice notes. On the palate, it's actually quite rich, but the tannins are a bit harsh. I would rate this 75 points. And it's kind of difficult to say where it comes from. I don't think that it tastes like the old world. For me, this tastes more like the new world. So it could be something from Australia, like for example, a Cabernet Sauvignon from down there. Could also be something from Chile or Argentina. But for me, this slight herbaceousness, the green character, I dare say, points more towards South Africa, in my opinion. And I've been studying up on my South African wines. So I would say this could be um, entry-level Cabernet Sauvignon from South Africa. Let's look inside the bag. Oh, okay, so close. It is actually South Africa, but it's not Cabernet Sauvignon. It's Pinotage, grape variety that is really only home in South Africa. And it's not necessarily the grape variety that I love the most, but some good wines made from Pinotage. This definitely isn't one of them, but I actually thought the price was higher than what it is. It's two euros 50. So it's really cheap. And at that price point, you can't really complain about the wine. It's okay. For two euro 50, what do you expect? So we are moving on to wine number six. And I think I have to rinse my glass here because it just looks quite a bit lighter in color. So second attempt, wine number six. Okay, so this is really light in color. That's quite good with red wines in a blind tasting because there are not so many red wines that are as light as this one. The wine is not only light in color, it's also light in flavor. There's a little bit of cherry flavor coming through. That's kind of it. There's also a little bit of black tea flavors, a little bit of spice notes. On the palate, it's quite juicy and round. Very low tannins. Acidity is also not too pronounced, but there's some acidity there. So for me, this style of wine, this type of wine is very much reminiscent of German Pinot Noir, Spätburgunder. I would say this is probably from Baden or the Pfalz. And it's an okay wine, but it's not a great Pinot Noir. It's very difficult to produce high quality Pinot Noir at low prices. They tend to be either cheap or good. So I would rate this 77 points. It's average, it's not bad at all, but there's nothing to rave about. So let's have a look. Maybe it's not even Pinot Noir. Hmm? Could be. Now I'm getting sweaty hands. But, mm, I was right. This time I was really right. So this is a Pinot Noir Spätburgunder from Baden. You know, every time I spit a wine out, I can still smell the Marlboro Sauvignon Blanc in my spittoon. It's not a sign of quality, I don't know, but it's definitely aromatic. So we're getting towards the end and it almost seems like the wines were in order of heaviness of the bottle. This is definitely a heavy bottle. And a light colored wine again. Color is very important when it comes to red wines in blind tastings, especially if the color is light, because there are not so many grape varieties that produce light colored reds. Wine number seven smells again of cherries, a little bit of blackberries, but there are also flavors of licorice and some spice notes coming through. On the palate, it's quite a dense and concentrated red, with lots of tannins, lots of acidity, and quite a lot of body as well. So that's kind of interesting. I think flavor-wise, it could have been a Pinot Noir as well, but the texture really points towards Nebbiolo. So this is a great variety that produces very tannic, high acidity red wines. And this for me feels very much like a Nebbiolo. I'm not really sure whether it's from Barolo or Barbaresco, but those are pretty much the options. Nebbiolo is not planted in many places. 
in commercial volumes. So um, I think this is probably a Barolo just because it's maybe a little bit leaner than what I would get from Barbaresco. And it's not a great Barolo. I would rate this 85 points, which is pretty low for Barolo. Barolo can be really outstanding. I think this is more of an entry level Barolo, even though this probably will retail for 15 to 20 euros, I think. Barolo just doesn't come much cheaper than that. But let's have a look first whether it's actually Barolo and not a Rioja or something like that. It is Barolo. Bam. Bang on the money. It doesn't really list the producer. It says A-V-I-P-S-P-A. -A. So yeah, the producer doesn't really want to be associated with this product maybe. And it retails for eight euros 99 which is very cheap for barolo i actually gotta say this is fairly typical barolo i identified it as a barolo so eight euro 99 is a pretty good price to get an introduction into the region so maybe try this wine if you like it then next time buy a slightly better barolo but as an entry point, this might be quite good. So here we are, the last one of the tasting, lucky number eight. So let's get it over with. This is definitely not another light colored wine. It's pretty dark. It smells of blackberry, a little bit of cassis. There are also flavors of plums coming through. So this is actually a fairly good wine. It's juicy. There's also a little bit of structure. It's not too boring, but it doesn't have a lot of length. It's a good balanced wine. I would rate this 80 points and I think this feels to me very old world in style. Um, I would actually go to France, I would go to Bordeaux here. I think this could be a good entry level Bordeaux. I mean not the super cheap stuff, maybe more the 9 euro 99 kind of Bordeaux. So let's lift the last veil or open the last bag and see whether I'm right this time. It's actually Bordeaux Superior. It's actually three euros 19. So I think this is a pretty good wine for three euros 19. Bordeaux is very much associated with the top end wines. So everyone knows Lafitte and Latour and Mouton and all those wineries, but it's actually a pretty big region. It's bigger in terms of its vineyard size than Germany as a whole. So there's quite a lot of wine coming out of Bordeaux also at the entry level and quite a lot of it is really bad. This is actually fairly good. Lidl ones are definitely Lidl on price, but are they also big on quality? And my answer is not necessarily. There were some really good examples like the Riesling, for example, the Barolo at this price point was also really good and the Bordeaux was also pretty good. The La Mancha was terrible and I wouldn't recommend it. And the rest were kind of average and pretty cheap. So you can definitely find some good wines at pretty low prices at Lidl. You can also find better wines at higher prices if you want to spend a little bit more. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, then please like it down there. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. My question of the day is what are your opinions on Lidl wine? Please comment down below. I hope I see you guys again soon. Until then, stay thirsty.